Greetings. This is Robert Lyon, lead designer for RTL Games, here to show you a game currently in development, not for production, called House Flip. So, this is a game where you're going to play a house flipper, in which you're going to find a house, fund the house, and fix the house, and eventually flip the house. So, how is this game actually going to work? You know, so you have a game board, you have cards, and what the cards do is they have different home styles on it, they have different rooms, and different qualities of rooms. Rather than showing you the big messy deck, I'll show you the specific cards, and this is what a winning deck would look like. Again, you have again a southwestern style with the image of the room by which it's depicting. In this case, it's a bathroom. It is excellent quality, so it's, of course it looks like an amazing southwestern bathroom. And there are four rooms per house, right? So you have bedroom, living room, and kitchen, all of which are excellent quality. Now, there are three qualities. There are four rooms, and there are probably, I think, six or seven styles, depending upon you know exactly where we're at in development at the moment for the home styles themselves. So the idea of the game is to get each one of the rooms as high quality as possible, and there you go. So basically, you make one run around the board. You'll end up at completed work. When you can do, finish the completed work section, you'll all show your cards and see who's got the best quality of those four rooms. So, problems you run into. How do people who've not played the game before understand exactly how many rooms and the quality of rooms that are in the game? So if I have, say, these three, would these three be enough to win? Uh, not necessarily, it kind of depends, but what does that actually mean? So we decided to change the card, so the new cards we have coming out with look like this. So now we've got a card that says, you know, specifically what the home style is, a picture of what the home style is, a picture of the room. Um, and now we've actually labeled how many rooms are in the house and the quality of the room that's there. So you know, really from the get-go, that each room's going to have, or each house is going to have four rooms in it, and each one's going to be of poor, good, or great quality. So you can actually understand how well you're going to be doing within the game as you're pulling cards. So this solves the problem of user experience with the game, if it's very low, you can still play and have a great time because each card will explain to you really what's going on. We learned that from my first four way in the poor UX section of the cards, which didn't have any of that data on there. They're still fine, they'll still function, but they're not quite as good as when you take the time to spend in looking at how people are gonna actually engage with the cards and try to figure it out. Because in the end, Again, you're not doing your taxes, you're playing a game, you're having fun. And we want to make this as fun and enjoyable as humanly possible, and that's one way we can do it, is improve the user experience with the cards, which is exactly what we did with this. So again, while these are still very playable, they're not really where we want to go, and that's a change we've made in this version. So, how to play the game. So first you're going to pick one of your meeples. We'll pick a red meeple. He will be our house flipper, and we'll put him on the start icon. We'll start off with six cards. First off, we'll get a tutor, craftsman, another craftsman, third craftsman, modern, and a ranch. So you can see you have different house styles. And one of the decisions you're going to have to make in the game is you're going to have to pick a house style almost on the get-go as you start collecting cards. So in this case, you're going to want to keep the craftsman because we have three of them. Although we have poor, excellent, and good, which is not great, but it's okay. It's a good place to start as we go through the game. Now, one of the things that I, I figured out early was that because the board, which is fine, um, is short, because you're not going to do multiple loops, you're going to do one loop. So to, to save issues, we have a three-sided dice rather than six-sided dice, which is normally what you would see. So on the board, you're going to see three different colors. You're going to see green, red, and white. Green means you pick a card. You just pull a card out of the stack, stick it in your deck, and that's it. Red means you drop a card, but you don't pick a card. That mechanic will need absolutely more work because that, during gameplay, did not work out well. People just ran out of cards because they got bad rolls. So mathematically, they should be able to pull up an even amount. However, in reality, it just didn't work out that way. So, you know, we shouldn't let actual math stop us from being able to play a good game. So at any rate, I'll show you how to play real quick, and then we'll, we'll uh, go through some of the more issues we're running into, and then we'll kind of wrap it up. So first, he gets a two, bad neighbors. So first off, I gotta dump a card. So I'm gonna dump off a card that doesn't match. We'll take the ranch, and that'll go away. Now I'm just down to five cards. Now you can see the problem. If you keep hitting reds, you're gonna run out of cards. So that mechanic I need to get some work on. Again, input would be much appreciated. Two, so environmental hazard. See, 
dropping another card. So modern's going away. Now I'm down to four cards, which again can create another bigger problem. So let's try this one more time and hopefully we can pull a card. Pull a one, yep, we got a card. So got Tudor. Tudor doesn't match a craftsman, but still we got a card. Now we're just, again, we started with six and now we're down to five. So let's try this again. Two, one, two. Okay, now we hit the spinner. Um, the spinner is ideally the great leveler of all of this. This should be the way in which you get a crappy deck. You should be able to get it fixed and kind of sort out some of these things by swapping with your neighbors or pulling from the main deck. One of the problems we ran into is that everybody's equally getting hammered as they're going around here. So some people may only have two cards in their deck and you have to swap with them and they just basically give you the same junk that they had and the same junk you have. So we need to work that a little bit to improve the engagement with, I'm going to get something really good out of this, because there's only one, two, three, four, five spaces by which you're going to go to the spinner. So with this, we'll show you what I mean. Hit the spinner, and it's discard all poor cards in your hand and draw to replace. So how many poor cards do we have? We have two. Now we have to ditch all these two. Now I have lost my craftsman's card, and now I'm down to two craftsmen, which is not great. So I pulled off another tutor. And I pulled off another tutor. Great. You know what? I may have to shift to tutor because now I have three tutor cards and two craftsman's cards. But the problem is I'm still down to five cards, not where I want to be. So as he goes around the board, it'll pretty much continue along the same way. But I wanted to share exactly some of the issues we're having with this because I think we're on a really good track with this. It's a lot of fun for people to play. It's really fast to learn, uh, as you can see, especially with the new cards. The new cards having all of the descriptors on it, it makes it a breeze to pick up. So we're looking for some more ideas on what you guys would think would be a great mechanic um, and try to work out new ways in which we can make this more enjoyable to play. Um, again, if you want to see more of my stuff, it's on the Game Crafter under RTL Games, uh, or just shoot me a note via the, the video you're currently watching right now. If you have comments or suggestions, again, we are actively looking for input. So even if you say this game is horrible, that's still input we can use and try to make it better. Because again, if nobody's having fun playing this, what's the point in making it? The idea is for families to get together, play a great game, enjoy themselves, and, and not have to do their taxes to basically finish off the game. So this is Robert Lyons saying thank you very much, and as always, happy gaming.